I'm here to talk to you today, today about is about two technologies, Intel 3D Crosspoint and Intel 3D NAND, that are part of the tech, new products that, that we will be introducing in the market and already have introduced some. And originally, if you look at the schedule, I had a different title for this presentation about transforming storage with innovations in non-volatile memory. And I was thinking, oh, that's kind of boring. Um, how can I better get across the story about what we're trying to do with 3D Crosspoint and 3D NAND? And I thought of this idea of symbiosis, which is a cooperative relationship. And really, when we think about the technologies that we're introducing in 3D, with 3D NAND and 3D Crosspoint, it's about the cooperation of both. It's about performance with 3D Crosspoint, and it's about storage or mass with, with 3D NAND. So let me help you uh, with, uh, let me explain with, with an illustration here. <laughs> Those of you who are familiar with some Disney movies may recognize this. Um, this is a sea anemone and a clownfish. So what does this have to do with storage? Well, the clownfish here has a special covering that makes it, uh, it, it makes it so it doesn't get stung by the anemone. And the anemone protects the clownfish by keeping, it away, keeping its predators away from them. And the clownfish in turn keeps the anemone's predators away from the anemone. And so they, they work in cooperation together. And like I said, that's what our technologies do with 3D Crosspoint and 3D NAND. Let me introduce you to a, a world of possibilities when we talk about data by looking at this presentation from the University of Pisa. We collaborate with a medical foundation called Imago7, doing research on MRI, especially in degenerative diseases of brain. Now a researcher in there came up with the idea of undersampling, so getting less data from the machine, and filling the gaps by using pre-computed tables. This approach is effective as long as you have a lot of memory, but actually current system does not allow the right amount of memory, so we try to expand this memory using Intel Obtained technology. We started deploying SSD drives and NVMe drives, and at last we decided to install Intel Obtained drives in our scientific computing environment. The Intel Obtained drives have low latency and fast speed, and we reached a lot of improvement in our scientific computation. We can shrink down uh, to two minutes an uh, uh, examination process that took 40 minutes before, so this is really good for patients. I joined this group about four years ago because I wanted to be part of data center transformation and be part of uh, solving big problems. And I love that story because he talks about reducing examination time from 40 minutes to two minutes. And I, I think that's real significant progress um, that we're very proud about. And um, th these are the type of solutions that we want to work with you on to help enable your customers. Um, ultimately, at the heart of what we do is data and lots and lots of data, especially today. And Intel itself is transforming from a PC company to a data company to respond to this explosive growth of data. And it's interesting to note, I looked up a few facts as I was putting this talk together and um, some interesting things to note, over 90% of the data in the world today has been created over just the past two years. Experts also predict that there will be a 4,300% increase in annual data production by 2020. This is astonishing, and this is fundamentally transforming every sector of our economy. But having access to data is, is not just a question of volume, it's a question of how to retain, process, and understand it in order to get the most value from it. Here's one example of what I think is an incredible story. Um, a bunch of numbers here, 15 million, 812 million, 1.48 billion, and, and 25.3 billion US dollars. Anybody have an idea of what these numbers represent? Any guesses? That's okay. So if you're familiar with uh, Singles Day in China, um, this is uh, basically a commercially uh, a generated uh, commercial event that happens on November 11th. And these are figures just from Alibaba sales. Um, Alibaba had 15 million products listed on its website, received 812 million orders, 
is pro was in the process of processing 1.48 billion payments. I'm not sure why the payments are more than the orders, but uh, that's the data. And then uh, generated 25.3 US dollars of sales in 24 hour period. The 25.3 billion was an increase from the previous year of 17.8 billion. To me, this is an incredible uh, 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 example of the, the types of, of data explosion that's happening all over. But it's not just happening with e-commerce. It's happening all over the place. If you look at this, um, global internet traffic in 2021 will be equivalent to 127 times the volume of the entire global internet in 2005. The internet traffic will reach 30 gigabytes per capita by 2021, which is up from 10 in 2016. Smart hospitals will be generating 3 terabytes of data per day. Autonomous cars, 4 terabytes per day. Connected airplanes, 40 terabytes per day. Um, another interesting fact, the Airbus A350, talk about the data that's generated. Um, I read where that has 6,000 sensors alone in, in, in that plane. The Airbus A380, the double-decker, has 10,000 sensors just in the wings alone. That's a lot of data. Smart factories will produce one petabyte of data per day. And on and on and on. There's many more examples where data explosion is happening, which represents opportunities for all of us in this room. But how do you ensure the data is accessible and useful? And that really gets into what Intel is looking at. We call it the virtuous cycle or the virtuous cycle of growth. And this is Intel's strategy in a picture. Revolving our strategy is, is customer experiences. So from our perspective, it's not just about creating CPUs for PCs anymore and creating technologies for devices. It's about creating technology that will fuel customer experiences. Part of that in the future world will be connectivity. 5G will certainly be a part of that, but as more and more devices um, enter the market, and, and we have various projections out there, well, 50 billion connected devices will be entering the market in the not too distant future from rings that monitor your, your, um, your blood glucose levels to smart watches, of course, there are many of those out there, smart cars, et cetera, you go on and on. Connectivity and the need for devices to process and analyze data real time is, is prevalent. Cloud is obviously driving all of this, um, the internet of things and various devices. Memory will be, be a, at the heart of that, and of course that's what we're here to talk about today. So how can we make sense of, of all the data? Um, we look at this and, and we, we say, well, how can we take advantage of Moore's Law and continue to drive economics, the economics of, of managing data to, to make it affordable? And this picture represents what we call the data sphere. And the simple idea here is that moving data closer to the CPU so we have the CPU here, and as we go further out, the, the cost of, of managing the data is lower, but there's a higher delay in the response time. So in an ideal world, we want to get data closer to the CPU because this unleashes the compute performance due to lower latency, and it gives customers the ability to make good real-time decisions, offer better service level agreements, and better quality of service. However, the trade-off is, as indicated on the, the bottom line there, is cost versus performance. The longer the delay, the less it costs. The shorter, the more it costs. We're forced to make that trade-off today. However, there are different tiers of technology that address the trade-offs between cost and latency. Where and how you store your data matters. And we need to innovate in all of these tiers in order to fully optimize data center storage. With hot data, hot data is closer to the CPU. It involves new workloads that require fast and const constant access to the data. Here, there are many TAM expansion opportunities with real-time analytics, like we saw with the University of Pisa, and machine learning. Typically, DRAM is used today because it's super fast, but of course, it's, it's relatively more expensive. 
warm data as we move out in the data sphere. It involves new workloads that require fa um, that that uh, where workloads aren't done in real time, such as batching. Um, here you can scale with low cost technology. Today, to balance the cost of performance and um, and cost is a mix of SSDs and hard drives. And then as we go out in the data sphere with cold data, this is data that can be stored for long periods of time. For example, like pictures on social media, this is accessed very infrequently and predominantly hard drives are used in this tier. There are different technologies, like I mentioned, that address these different tiers. Um, and really, these trade-offs were the motivation behind the two technologies that we'll talk about, 3D Crosspoint and 3D NAND. So um, some people ask me, so what's the difference between 3D Crosspoint and Optane? Really, 3D Crosspoint is a technology that we developed with Micron. That's the media for products that we call Optane technology. So Optane includes 3D Crosspoint, but it also includes our controllers, firmware, software, etc. So uh, if you hear the word 3D Crosspoint, it usually refers to the media. Optane refers to the product, but oftentimes people use them interchangeably. And 3D Crosspoint and 3D NAND is really getting back to my earlier analogy. It's that symbiosis of speed and mass or bulk storage. We see both of these technologies existing in cooperation in order to better service data needs. On the left, 3D NAND is about higher density and lower costs. We're pushing outward to capture more of the warm data on a media that is a thousand times faster than a hard drive. On the right, Optane technology is solidifying our position in hot data for real-time processing while also pushing inward with memory media that is 10 times the density of DRAM, pulling more data on this faster storage and bigger memory. Optane is fast, it's dense and non-volatile. It enables a better, lower, uh, a better quality of service, lower latencies and higher throughput. However, instead of hearing from me about it, what I thought is I'd show a video and hear from the Intel executives that made this happen. Four plus decades, that's how long it's been since the last truly revolutionary disruptive memory technology was invented. But that's about to change. The quest for getting data closer to the CPU or solving the problem of the data and the CPU not always being together has been around since the origination of computing, since von Neumann originally did some of his work. Probably the last real breakthrough in memory storage, uh, if I was to characterize it, would have been in the early 70s. I mean, if you look at the three main kinds of memory that exist today, the predecessor of flash was really the UV proms that were developed in that time period. DRAM was developed in the late 60s, and it still is fundamentally the same. Really nothing substantially new has really occurred since that time period. All the while, data growth is exploding, roughly doubling every two years. And those massive volumes of data must not only be stored, but analyzed to extract meaning, value, and insight. We all know that there's more and more data in the world. The more data that there is, the more processing you're going to want to do on that data. Faster storage is important to computing because computing is done on data, and data is put in storage. The longer it takes to get to that data, the slower the computing goes. So high performance computing has always been very data hungry. And the larger the data sets we can handle for HPC applications, the better science we're going to be able to do. But therein lies the problem. Even today's fastest storage memory is roughly 10,000 times slower than the fastest CPU memory, resulting in a performance crushing penalty each time data is accessed from storage. We desperately need faster storage memory. Computer architecture from its days of von Neumann hasn't changed significantly in the sense that it still has the same basic components. There are a bunch of memory technologies in a, in a computer, uh, all the way from registers in a CPU. There are actually three levels of cache in a CPU die itself, where some of the, the, the levels are closer and more expensive and faster, and then they get bigger and a little bit farther away from the, even inside the chip, there's close and far. And then you get off the chip, and today you have DRAM, and then you have NAND SSDs, 
and then you could have hard drives also that are even farther away. So we want to get as much of the data as close to the CPU as we possibly can. And uh, if we can get that data to be faster, then the CPU waits less for that data. For decades, engineers around the globe, including multiple teams at Intel, have been racing to design that next breakthrough memory technology. Many have questioned whether it's even possible. But now, Intel engineers have realized that breakthrough with Intel Optane Technology, a unique combination of Intel's advanced system memory controllers, interface hardware and software with revolutionary 3D cross-point memory. 3D Crosspoint is going to bring a lot of exciting capability. It really starts to marry the, the worlds of memory and storage together. So with 3D Crosspoint, we can really have the three values that's most valuable both out of DRAM and out of the solid state drives. So we can take what was previously multiple layers of a memory hierarchy and concatenate them down into essentially just one layer. And so for the first time, uh, the 3D Crosspoint technology will allow you to combine both memory and storage into one memory device. With 3D Crosspoint technology, the performance that it delivers, it's kind of a once in a lifetime sort of thing. I mean, it's literally, this, this hasn't come by in several decades. It really is gonna unleash software designers, system designers into new systems and new capabilities that we don't even understand yet. Well, Intel's new memory technology um, comes close to being the holy grail of memory. It's cheaper than DRAM, it's way faster than NAND, and it's non-volatile, so it's getting pretty close to that ideal memory. So where, where we see Optane fitting is, is what we call the, the gap. So if you look at this on the left-hand side, you have SRAM or DRAM, um, relatively low capacity, very fast, but volatile. On the right hand side, you have uh, NAND SSDs or hard drives, a lot of capacity, non-volatile, but fairly slow. So we see Optane fitting in this gap and, and providing solutions that um, haven't existed before in the past. So um, what about 3D NAND? Well, 3D NAND, the, the key point there, as I mentioned before, this is about the mass side of that symbiotic relationship where we want to drive high density and low cost. And you'll probably hear it from other vendors today. As, as the industry moves towards 3D NAND technologies, it's about getting more capacity, getting denser, getting higher capacity drives to enable um, things in data centers, from, especially from a total cost of ownership perspective that haven't been possible in the past. From our perspective and, and our experiences with 3D NAND, we're increasing the density seven and a half times from our 2D MLC to our second gen 3D TLC NAND that we'll be seeing this year, which is a 64 layer product. This utilizes floating gate technology that Intel has been using for decades um, with our processing um, technologies. So. Um, we see the marriage of 3D NAND and 3D Crosspoint, like I mentioned, to enable uh, usages and satisfy the, the needs of that data sphere that we all face. From a product portfolio perspective, this is just a simple chart, a simple stack up of processing and storage. Looking back, uh, looking to, at what's happening today and looking ahead to the future. So yesterday from a processing, obviously we have the CPUs, we have 2D NAND as continues to exist. Uh, the industry is, is evolving to 3D NAND, of course, and hard drives. We don't see hard drives going away, but certainly um, there will be an, an emergence of 3D NAND-based products, whether they're from Intel or others. And then we see Optane technology filling that gap, like I mentioned. As we go forward into the future, I'll, I'll be talking about Intel Persistent Memory. So that's not a product name. Uh, for those that you, of you who may have attended the SNEA Persistent Memory Summit last month in California, you've heard about this from Intel and, and other vendors. But Intel will be releasing this year a, a DIM uh, based on 3D Crosspoint technology. And, and I'll talk about that in a second. So um, that's the stack that we see going forward in terms of a portfolio of solution components. Um, from a data center configuration standpoint, we'll have a number of products that are supported today. 
Um, in the interest of time, I'm not going to spend too much time on this, but on the left-hand side is the traditional uh, storage or caching usage model where uh, Optane can play a role there, lower capacities, you're still having solutions that incorporate 3D NAND-based solutions. And then on the right-hand side, you can also use Optane as extended memory with a product that we call Intel Memory Drive technology, which is essentially an Optane SSD and software that will allow the system to, to pool the DRAM and the Optane SSD as one memory pool. And the software will, will help the OS and the applications manage it as such. So there are lots of options today. We have a, a breakout session later this afternoon where we'll be talking about Optane more in detail. So I encourage you to come to that and you can have a chance to ask a lot more questions. So um, this technology, what is it enabling? Both 3D Crosspoint and 3D NAND are enabling new usages and form factors. I talked about the, the DIM form factor for 3D Crosspoint, and that's depicted uh, with the product on the left. And then on the right is something that we've internally called the ruler. And um, I have one here, and we can pass it around later. You can come up and take a look at it. This is also known as EDSFF. That's a mouthful to say. It stands for Enterprise and Data Center SSD Form Factor. Uh, it's an industry consortium that's driving uh, new product uh, form factor innovations. And I'll talk about this in a little more detail in just a second. First with persistent memory. So why are we doing this? Well, I think it's obvious, especially for those of you in the room, uh, what we want to do is marry the, the best of storage and with the best of, of memory. So the best of storage, having it be non-volatile, the best of memory from the perspective of we'll have byte addressability that will allow us to do things that we haven't been able to do before um, uh, because of, of its capability to be non-volatile. So persistent memory will be launched later this year, like I said. And again, this is not the product name. It's just a generic term. All those details will be forthcoming. And uh, we have a lot of resources. I have a slide at the end that uh, will, will point you to industry website that will have a lot more information. The SNEA Persistent Memory Summit has a lot of great information posted on its website from last month as well. So I'd encourage you to take a look at that. Here's a look at the EDSFF workgroup that has been driving the, the standard. So um, this is something that we've obviously been a part of, but we're not alone. Um, similar to Michael's comments about believing in standards, uh, Intel is a, a big proponent of standards, as you know, and uh, think that the, the industry needs um, uh, standards for a new form factor like this. And, are working closely with all of these companies to make it happen. The website I'll also list on the last page, but uh, there's a the third party working group website that has a lot more information about this form factor in case you're interested. The ruler form factor um, was thought of by Intel by trying to figure out with 3D NAND getting denser and denser, we need to figure out a form factor that can pack as much NAND as possible into the smallest amount of space. And so as we worked with the industry on this, this problem, a couple of other requirements became very apparent. One is we wanted to pack that volume in a 1U form factor. Two, we wanted to make it thermally efficient. And we wanted to make it front service, uh, front serviceable to, to make it easier for technicians, et cetera, uh, to service the product. So um, I'm happy to say that there, the specifications have been ratified by this work group. And we have two form factors. The one that I'm holding up is the long form factor. This is 318.5 millimeters long. And then there's a short one as depicted on the slide. This is 111 millimeters long. And um, similar connect, uh, the same connector, they'll support by four, by eight, and in the future by 16. And um, we'll have, uh, um, you know, give the industry the, the autonomy 
to um, innovate around the specification to give you, our customers, options and flexibility from a supply chain perspective, flexibility in unique differences with, with some of these uh, uh, characteristics of the specification. I mentioned um, the front and the front serviceability. So here, here's a couple of other um, benefits of the EDSFF specification. One is that it has programmable LEDs. So this will allow you guys to quickly locate failed drives, offline drives, and unpopulated slots. It also has enclosure management with slot level power control, um, which en obviously enables single drive isolation or system level power loss. Um, and then it has a carrier list des design, so I know it's hard to see, you can kind of see it on the slide, but in the spe specification, it calls for a, a, a little clip that will pop out, and again, the exact implement implementation of this will vary by vendor, but this will allow a technician to pull this out from the front and make the serviceability um, fairly easy, and obviously it doesn't require any sort of carrying a case, so that also helps from a total cost of ownership standpoint. From a 3D NAND density perspective, one thing that we're very excited about is how much capacity we can fit into a one U space. Um, depicted on the left is a 42 U rack made up of two terabyte hard drives which in total adds up to about one petabyte of data. As we head into this year, these rulers will be available in 32 terabytes, and there are 32 rulers in, in the design in a 1U rack. So we'll be able to, to offer one petabyte of data in a 1U rack. So that's, that's part of 3D NAND and the density that we're offering. Um, uh, and, and I realize that, that other vendors will be able to offer a similar high density with, with their 3D NAND, but it's also indicative of giving you all more choices in better meeting the needs of your customers. Uh, a fun fact with this is the largest library in the world is the Library of Congress in the United States. And uh, depending upon whose estimates you, you rely on, a conservative estimate says that the Library of Congress has 4.5 petabytes of, of data in all of its books and tapes on hand. Um, this year, we would be able to fit all of the data in the Library of Congress in 5U. Um, so I think that's pretty incredible and goes to what I was talking about earlier with the, the data explosion and the amount of technology innovation that's happening um, on the side to store it, to process it, and to analyze it. So, um, wrapping up this talk, just wanted to uh, thank you for your time and just reiterate that um, Intel is investing in two symbiotic technologies, 3D NAND and 3D Crosspoint, which enables our Intel Optane technology-based products. It's all about performance and bulk storage. We see them both uh, existing together for a long time to solve different needs of, of our data sphere. There's a lot of information here on some industry third-party websites, PM, um, the persistent memory um, website, pmem.io. There's also an Intel website with a lot more information about persistent memory and then the EDSFF uh, Industry Workgroup uh, website for a lot more information. So I thank you for your time and attention, and I uh, hope you have a good rest of the, the uh, conference. Thank you. <laughs>